A few years ago, Mark Lynette and I put together an album for the Beach Boys and Capitol Records called uh, Hawthorne, California. And uh, we were going through the Beach Boys tape vaults to find, you know, if there was unreleased stuff that might be suitable to put on this package. And there was this one tape that I think that just said Dreams on it. No other label. And uh, we took it into the studio and it turned out to be this gorgeous thing that Dennis sings called A Time to Live in Dreams. It's on the album. And as I'm listening to it and I'm listening to the lyrics, I said, this has got to be Steve. Because again, the message that's sort of underlying is so in tune with everything else that he does. Um, so what happened was we all got together one night for, uh, for a little dinner at Marilyn Wilson's house. Stephen and Daniel, Marilyn's husband, and, and Marilyn and myself. And I brought over some things that I'd found just to, just to play for them. And I start playing this, you know, this beautiful tune, just Dennis at the piano, a time to live in dreams. And Stevie's listening to it. And about 20 seconds in, like the light bulb goes off. Oh my God! And he gets up and he's jumping up literally on the couch, jumping up and down going, oh, I know this, yeah, yeah, I, I, I did this one. And, and, he, he, and he jumps down on the floor and he's kind of dancing around and he starts reciting a longer poem from which it was based on. He hadn't heard it for, I guess at that point, 32 years. He'd never, never known, I think, even that, that uh, it still existed and hadn't revisited it since then. And it was wonderful to <laughs> reunite Steve with a, you know, with a piece of music he'd done. And it was even nicer to put it on the album and get it released. And it has become a landmark Dennis Wilson track for a lot of Dennis's fans. About three years ago, um, uh, I, I, I uh, moved and uh, uh, moved out of the house that my studio was in, uh, which left it pretty much empty. And um, for one reason or another, uh, uh, Stevie wound up uh, living, living in that house. And um, just because of all the music swirling around, it just uh, you know, suddenly seemed like an interesting idea to try to get a, uh, an album together of all of Stevie's, or a lot of Stevie's material um, interpreted by different people as uh, you know as is the case what's kind of amazing to me is all the um, you know friend, you know artists artists and other friends that um, uh, you know appreciate him and his work and that's why they're a part of this record everybody you know can contribute to this as a, as a as a labor of love not um, you know not looking for a, <laughs> a gold record uh, or, any, or anything greater than to uh, help, you know, help Stevie and, uh, you know, help, help get the, some of these songs heard. Probably Gregory from Brian's band did um, um, Time to Live in Dreams. I got a call from, I can't remember if it was Alan Boyd. It might have even been Mark Lynette. One of them said, we're, we're looking for submissions. We know Stevie has recommended you. I think pretty sure Stevie recommended us as a potential people, me and Julia Wolf, my wife, to do um, a song. And this, I, among the pool of things that were available, this came up. I, and again, I don't remember if, was, if this one particular one was suggested or we picked, chose it out of a pool. I can't remember, but we got a call and we said yes, because we, you know, we, of course, we support Stevie and we want to be part of some, something that not only benefits him, but is, uh, you know, redounds on his greater glory. <laughs> His arrangement was so different than I would think. It's a whole different take on it. I love it. It's a different shade, a different facet, and it shows the possibilities of the song. I mean, no one would do it like Probin. The first time I heard it, I liked it, but the second, it had, really, it's deep. Like, the, the more I listened to it as we were preparing to, you know, writing down the words and getting down the chords and everything, it's a really, it's a great song. And Dennis's production is, in particular, is fabulous on that, on the 68 version. And you know, as many ways as one says the whatever their favorite poem is everyone says it a little differently and he found his own individual and unique approach and expression i did most of the arranging myself with some help from my wife julia who sang on it and engineered it and was very helpful in sort of pointing out things that didn't didn't work uh, we wanted to try to remain true to the feel of it which is a quiet 
in sort of introspective place. At the very beginning, it's background vocals and um, three or four guitars um, being played with an ebo, which is a little instrument that you, it's not even an instrument, it's a, it's a device you hold on against the strings of the guitar and it generates an electromagnetic field and just causes the string to vibrate constantly, like a violin bow, if you were just to do like that. So you just, if it makes it sound very smooth. You can't hear the sound of any plucking because it's always being sounded. It almost sounds like a voice. So that worked well with the background vocals at the very intro. So at the very beginning of this, you, you'll hear three tracks of Ebo guitars and it looks like six background vocals, partly me and partly Julia. Sounds a little bit like this. A time to live in dreams A time to lay beside the hour We go to the gentle place within So we, we, we chose a high string guitar for the main rhythm instrument. I mean, he had it on piano. And we used a high string guitar, which is like a 12 string with the low strings taken off. It has a sort of a brighter sound and it's a, it's a little more delicate. And then the second thing to go on was um, so we had a guitar and the lead vocal. And we thought, okay, what is necessary in this song? I wanted to originally to make it as stripped down as possible. All I wanted was a bass line, a little guitar part, and the lead vocal. That's all, that was all that was in my mind. So we laid those down and the bass was done on, on a, a keyboard organ. A gentle hand to touch Your smile so beautiful Becomes a part of me Julie and I had some, uh, a few ideas, and we, we actually originally had a lot more on it. We had a whole brass section going through the whole thing. And then we winnowed that out and made it so that there was brass in a couple of places. There's a trumpet, a flugelhorn, I think there's a point, there's a couple of trombones. And there's even a very brief section where there was a, a little chorale of a cup mute trumpet playing three notes along with a pedal steel, which is a little hard to hear in the mix. So now in this next part, there's the, this is the part where originally we just had a few vocals added in. And Dennis had this interesting thing coming down. And we tried something like that. It didn't really work. So instead of that, we, we put in three cup mute trumpets and a pedal steel, which um, just for the heck of it, I'm just going to play only those, only the, the, uh, the, the cup mute and the pedal steel. And that, that, this is what it sounded like. So now we'll try listening to the to what it is with everything in there the, the the organ and the guitar and the few vocals and now in the second verse we wanted to add a little bit more so i should say i don't know if we, i maybe the first thing was it was the first verse second verse i guess we'll call this the third verse so now there's one or two, couple of, there's a, instead of a, there's a flugelhorn and a trumpet and a trombone added to, I put in just another voice as a background. And that's... A child's joyous tear within since he has no fear. Now I know what love really is. Now there's the middle part, the new day. So we brought in the Ebo guitars again and left the horns out. The evening swiftly comes before the new day begins in this new day. But we tried to just sort of bring these things in and out where they might be nice. And in the very end, after we were done, um, I had this harmonica that I found under the house <laughs> and we ended up putting a harmonica on, which, which sounded good and reminded me, it made it a little more Pet Soundsy or Beach Boysy, um, just that that was sort of the Beach Boys nod was the use of the harmonica. I think I think it would have fit on Sunflower myself, but 
Uh, I'm not sure. It could have even been that, I mean, we don't know the internal politics of it. It might be that Dennis wasn't pleased with it or thought, or maybe the other guys in the band thought that it was a little too personal because it's so, it's this sort of tender, sacred space. And not that the Beach Boys couldn't go there, but it depends where on an album that goes. You can only have too many of those, those sorts of songs um, before you have to balance it out with other, another vibe. There's the hummingbird. Hi. I know I'm in front of your feeder. <laughs> I was wanting to get back to this sort of new age spiritual thing. I have that side of me, and that side, of course, appeals, or I should say connects with Stevie in that way. And I don't have that many people in my life now that represent the time in my life when I was doing that more. And he definitely does. I mean, he comes right out there with his poetry. When I get something from him, most of the, in the, in the email, most of the time I have a general idea of the, of the um, place it's going to be coming from, which is a... A, a place of, um, of reflection and and trying to do the right thing and and exploring uh, the, the mysteries of the spirit because it's not always about justice and the right thing it's about trying to find out what's true for you and then making that work with what's maybe true for everyone and to try to put out love as much as you can given that there is a lot of pain in the world and a lot of exploration that may lead to a dead end and then either be painful or you're cast onto another path that you have to invent on the spot or sometimes you're following someone else's lead and life life is complicated as Stevie knows and has expressed as well has expressed well in his poetry so it's good to have someone that is doing that consistently to um, because I can't always voice that or sometimes not I'm not always in that mode and sometimes it's good to be reminded that that way of looking at life and of dealing with people and dealing with situations um, can be done in a, in a, um, in a harmonious and a, um, a focused way. And if you keep your mind on the, the, the good things and on the, the right way to live with other people, that can help guide your life on, in a better way and on a better path. Let the greater self come out of all of us, the self that is one with all other selves, the self that wants peace and harmony, and let me every day die or reduce my attachment to the small self that wants to be important, that wants everyone 
to notice me, the screaming baby, not the beautiful baby, but the screaming baby that just wants its attention, that just wants to be noticed. Look at me, I'm something that wants to feel superior to others. Let me reduce that part of my being. And because it's so much more glorious in the other sense, and you do not lose your individuality, you enhance it and gain more.